this is just one of many. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Random Distractions Home Theater Update video. Uh, in this one, I wanted to touch on the basic calibration process that I go through with my Anthem MRX 1140 and Arc Genesis. Uh, but I also wanted to touch on a comment that I received on one of my previous videos, um, and also a video that was suggested to me on YouTube that kind of went along with that comment, funny enough, uh, to try something different uh, with the process. So kind of want to go through the basic process and then touch on how the other one turned out. All right, so time for the calibration. And besides the system, here are the other things that I use. My laptop to run Arc Genesis. And of course, the Arc Genesis microphone kit. First, I make sure that everything is on and that the microphone is set up in the main listening position to start, which in this case is the middle seat of our sofa. Then it's time to head to the laptop and start up Arc Genesis. First thing I do, although not necessary, is to remove the current Arc settings. Before I move too far along though, I want to set my subwoofers in the SVS app to negative 15 to start. On this screen, I just make sure that everything is set, and you can use the image above to make sure it represents your system. For me in this case, it's a 5.2.4. I did move on, but I will have to come back to this due to an error on my part later on in the video. The calibration will start doing its thing, and what I do in regards to the subwoofers is once it gets to it, it will say that it's too loud at my current setting of negative 15. So depending on how loud it is, I turn it down a few dB, and then as it gets closer to around 6 dBs too high, I start turning it down by 1 dB at a time. I found that in most cases it seems to like to be about 5 dBs hot. In this case, for the first subwoofer, it's 16 dBs too high. So I go down to negative 20 from negative 15 and retry. Now it's 11 dB too high, so I go down to negative 22. Now it's 9 dB too high, so I go down to negative 24. Now it's 7 dB too high, so I go down to negative 25, going down by 1 dB this time. Now it's 6 dB is too high, so I go down to negative 26. At negative 26, the first sub goes through and starts with the second sub, which at this point is 18 dB is too high. So I go from negative 15 to negative 20. Now it's 13 dB is too high, so I go down to negative 24. Now it's 9 dB is too high, so I go down to negative 26. Now it's 7 dB too high, so I go down to negative 27. Now it's 6 dB too high, so I go down to negative 28. And now it's at 5 dB too high, so I go down to negative 29. Going down to negative 29 finally helps it continue with the rest of it. Once that is done, it's time to measure relative delay, and the microphone is still in the main listening position. Uh, unfortunately, I ran into an error, but as I mentioned earlier on, this was my own doing. So I abort it and go to restart the calibration. Remember this screen? I forgot to scroll down. I went ahead and renamed the measurement, but the important part is putting in the distance for the front left speaker. Uh, this way you don't get that error that I received uh, when it was trying to do, do the relative delay. And for me in this case, it's 8 feet 4 inches. Unfortunately, I have to go through all the measurements again, but I'll skip the video to when it finishes the relative delay. With that speaker distance in place, it's no longer an error. From this point, it's time to move the microphone to position 2, which is to the left of the main listening position. It's about 2 feet away, and about 6 inches lower than the main listening position.
Here is position 3, which is to the right of the main listening position, about 2 feet away also, and about 6 inches lower from the main listening position. Here is position 4, which is to the left of the main listening position, about 2 feet away, but this time it's about 6 inches higher than what the main listening position was. And here is position 5, which is to the right of the main listening position, about 2 feet away, and also about 6 inches higher than the main listening position. That's the calibration, and so what I normally do is review the information. And I have been adding 3 dB to the room gain, but in this case that would take me past what the max that Anthem offers, which is 6 dB so decided to adjust to 4.125. From here, there are other things that you can do, of course, to all of the channels, but for now, I will leave it alone uh, since this is my basic process. The next thing is to do the automatic phase process, but you have to upload the calibration file to the device first. Once it's loaded, it's time to move the microphone back to the primary listening position and then start the process. Once that is loaded, this is the basic process that I've been doing and I can be done. But I need to make sure to save the calibration file so if I need to come back to it, I can. All right, so that's the basic process that I follow, and I do believe that it provides a good starting point. From here, I can listen to a couple of different things to see how the system sounds and decide if I need to make any adjustments. If you followed along with this process, then listen to your system and decide if it does need adjustments, because really it's up to you and what you feel should sound right. For me in this case, I do feel like I want to make some changes. Uh, so the following things that I'm going to do are not, you know, things that <laughs> you definitely have to do, uh, but I figured I would share them to see if, you know, you might want to try them. So based on this initial file, I received a comment on one of my videos uh, from Big Dog Access. And one of the things he mentions is that he noticed that there was mostly boost uh, in the EQ to the center channel, which you can see here, but preferably when EQing, you want to cut. Around the same time, I happened to get a suggestion on YouTube for a video from, I believe, Home Theater Guru, sort of talking about the same thing. He went over trying to adjust the speaker levels so that the green line would match the black target line. I also mentioned in a previous video that my head channels are really loud in the higher frequencies, and unfortunately that makes them really noticeable. So I will make some adjustments to the calibration to fix that. So to make those changes, you go to Adjust Settings, and first go to Set Speaker Levels. And for my front left, I will go up a little. Same thing for the center channel. For the front right, I will also go up. I think it will also go up on the surrounds, but I'm not sure if that is the right thing, but we'll see what it looks like. For the heights, I don't want to adjust the levels, but rather adjust targets. From there, I increase the correction to about 14,000 kHz, where it naturally rolls off. We go to review and see what that looks like. So now the front left speaker seems to match a little bit better with the black target line. The center channel is better and it is cutting instead of boosting frequencies but it does have a weird spike toward the higher frequencies. Here's the front right, but not sure if I want to make some more adjustments to better match the left. For the surrounds, I may have to make additional adjustments up to 10K for the targets. The heights look good to me. So back to adjust targets. 
For the surrounds, I moved the corrections up to 10,000 kHz. For the front right, I brought it down a little since it was a little over the target line. The front left looks okay, but may need to bump it a little. Now, the front right looks much better. The surrounds look much better now, and everything else I think looks okay. I will bump up the front left a little and check it out. Yeah, that looks much better, and it seems to match the right one much more. For the center, I think my only option is to increase the corrections all the way to 20 kHz. With that change, that looks better, but it did have to boost there towards the end. So let me adjust the level a little. With that level increase, it does look better now, at least to me anyway. Looking again, the surround right might need a little adjustment. So I'm going to try increasing it a little. And then try increasing a little bit more. But that actually seems to be worse. So let me lower it instead. Yeah, that seems much better, but maybe just a little more. Okay, that seems to match the surround left a little bit more. Now I will go ahead and save as and give it a unique name so not to override my baseline file. Then I upload it to the Anthem. Because I'm not sure if it needs it or not, I will go ahead and run the automatic phase adjustment again. Okay, so those are the additional changes that I made uh, based on the comments that I received in that video that I watched. Um, and again, I'm not saying that it's something that you need to do, uh, but hopefully it shows how you know customizable the system is and so how you can tailor the sound to what you prefer to, to hear. For me, the high frequency jumps in the surrounds and especially the high channels was just a little bit too much for my ears and it made them uh, feel a lot more localized. After reducing the high frequencies, everything blended much better and, you know, stuff still happened in the direction that they were supposed to be happening, but it was a lot harder to tell that, oh, you know, it's coming from that speaker uh, rather than it's coming from this side. Hopefully that makes sense. Also, making the changes so that the green line would match the black target line uh, for the different speakers did seem to make the system sound a little bit better, at least to my ears. Things seem to be filled out a little bit better. However, I may need to run some tests to verify that, but I'll save that for another video. Well, that's all that I have for this video. If you have any comments or suggestions in regards to how the calibration process went, uh, let me know down in the comments if there's anything I should try or, or experiment with. Um, I'm always open to suggestions uh, of things to try. And, uh, but for now, I would definitely appreciate it, of course, a like on this one and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next one drops. Until then, I hope you have a good one.